Ding, 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 ding. Good morning, everyone. Let's get started. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Bible Baptist Church Senior Saints here in May, Memorial Day weekend. Let's sit down and sing number 454, Battle Hymn of the Republic, all four verses. First verse. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible Swiss sword. His truth is marching on. speak yesterday and he said there's only been two people that has died for you the American soldier and Jesus Christ our Savior and uh, very thankful for that we live in a free country that we can do that all right we got everything out of control now there's just been a lot of stuff going on around here. You know that? You know, one of our senior saints just got back from a trip to Florida. And uh, she went with the daughter and her granddaughter. And the younger ones wanted to get in the water. So they were out at the beach. And I don't know, our, our senior saint member, I think she probably forgot her bikini. So she was sitting on a bench there watching the granddaughter and her daughter play in the water. 
And this fellow walks over and he says, may I sit down on the bench? She says, certainly. Uh, after a few minutes, she thought she talked to him a little bit. She says, are you a stranger here? And he says, I lived here years and years and years ago. He says, I'm familiar with the area. Then I left. So where'd you go all those years? Well, I was in prison. In prison, huh? Why did they put you in prison? I killed my wife. <laughs> and our senior saint looked over and says, oh, you're single. <laughs> You know, when you're talking, talking to Bill Mallory, you got to make sure he's got his ears in. Well, Bill was telling Bruce, he says, uh, I just bought me a new hearing aid. He says, I'm not going to have these problems anymore. <coughs> My hearing aid costs $4,000. It's state of the art. It's just perfect. <coughs> Bruce says, really? What kind is it? Bill says, 1230. <laughs> Another one of our senior men went in and uh, he went in for his checkup, you know, and the doctor checked him over and said, yeah, you're doing pretty good, but I'll give you some advice. And he's only some things he needed to do. And, uh, and he took it to heart. And a couple of days later, the doctor runs into him in Walmart. And the doctor says, well, how are you doing? He says, I'm doing fine. He says, here's your lady friend. He says, well, this is Nancy. Oh, you're out, out and about there. Oh, yeah. He says, I'm doing just what you told me, doctor. You told me to be cheerful and find a hot ma mama. <laughs> Doctor says, you didn't have your hearing aid is. What I told you was, be careful, you got a heart murmur. <laughs> always Happy Dale, they're always something going on in Happy Dale. Well, the family members, uh, the mayor at Happy Dale wanted to have something for all the uh, employees in Happy Dale, and, and uh, she wanted to have a steak dinner for them. And not, not just a steak dinner, but a steak dinner with mushrooms and onions and everything, all the stuff that goes with it. So the mayor goes, to respects, to see grandma respect. And she looked at the mushrooms there and she says, that's outlandish. I am not paying that for mushrooms. And the city manager, of course, along with her, he said, well, we'll see what we can find. So they get back and he goes out and he needs to find some mushrooms behind the barn. And she says, you sure those are not toadstools? He said, well, I'll tell you what, cook up some of them and we'll give them to Rover. And if it doesn't bother Rover's stomach, then you know, they're good to go and we can have our steak smothered with mushrooms and onions. So that she did and Rover just, oh, he loved it. He just ate that up, licked the bowl and everything else. Trotted off, went out, out to his shade tree and lay down, took his nap. So steak dinner time comes and everything is ready and the people are in there and they the steaks were delicious just just fantastic just done to perfection and they just finished eating and the city manager opens up the door and he says sorry to bring you bad news but rover's dead 
Oh, my, Rover's dead. Called the, the squad, you know, and they brought the stomach pumps and pumps everybody's stomach out, and, and they got all done. She said, Whoo, boy, I'm glad that's all right. We bit the bullet on that one. Just then the door opened again. The city manager poked He says, I'm mad as a hornet. He says, the driver that run over him never even stopped. <laughs> You know, the, the pastor sometimes gets called on to perform marriage ceremonies. And he had this couple, they'd both lost their mates and they were in assisted living and they decided, they were in their 90s, and they decided that they were going to get married. So they asked the pastor to come and of course he has a policy, he only marries church members. So he came to the assisted living facility and he performed a marriage ceremony. He got to the end of the ceremony, you know, and the husband and wife are sitting there and he says, I now pronounce you husband and wife. He says, now it's time to kiss the bride. And the old fellow said, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm too tired. <laughs> Ever been to Gatlinsburg? Love Gatlinsburg. I love the Smokies. There's always somebody got a bear in a cage there. Up there in the top of the hill, they've got a whole bunch of bears. They keep cages up there. Well, they had a bear there in Gatlinsburg in a cage, and everybody looked at him and talked to him, and they fed him Cokes. He loved Cokes and loved peanuts. And this bear, you know, he had him a Coke, and he'd grab that thing and down that thing and smile and he just was tickled to death to get to Coke and eat them peanuts. He, to eat, he could eat a pound of peanuts. Well, some smart aleck, some biker come through there one time and he saw this and he got a Coke can and he filled it full of gasoline. And he handed it to the bear and the bear upped it and you know, like he did every time, one swallow down it went. Realized what he's done. Well, he tore that cage apart. And that bear took off running, headed south for Pigeon Forge there, and he got about halfway down and he keeled over. They brought the veterinary out there, and the veterinary checked him out, and he says, well, did that can of gas kill him? And he said, no, he just run out of gas. <laughs> okay. The Westovers are going to sing for us. <laughs> this is what a day that will be. tears to dim the eye all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who 
died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day glorious day that will be what a day glorious day that will be mm -hmm. this one's called fast to the right Stay till I give you my parting advice It is all that I have to bestow Hold fast to the right Hold fast to the right Wheresoever your footsteps may roam And forsake not the way of salvation, my boy that you learn from your mother at home. In your satchel you'll find a Bible, my boy. It's the book of all others the best. It will teach you to live and prepare you to die. It will lead you to the home of the blessed. Hold fast to the right, hold fast to the right, wheresoever your footsteps may roam. And forsake not the way of salvation, my boy, that you learned from your mother at home. And forsake not the way of salvation, my boy, that you learned from your mother at home. I like Thank you. <laughs> Get the old fellow all squared around here. We're going to wind up in Ecclesiastes. I know Lewis preached through Ecclesiastes a while back and got a lot out of those messages. We sang the Battle Hymn of the Republic and that's fitting for what we used to call Decoration Day. It was Decoration Day and it come into being after the Civil War. Brothers fought brothers. Should never have happened. But it did happen, and the nation was sorrowful, and they started the Decoration Day. That became official in 1971. 1971, it became Memorial Day. I remember as a kid, every year, the end of May, my mother would buy flowers and we would go to the cemeteries. Down to Mount Zion, Noble County, where all the seekers were buried, and uh, Canton, where the Matthews were buried, Hopedale, different places. And she was the one daughter, the only daughter out of seven sons, and she had seven older brothers, and she took it upon herself to decorate the graves. I have a picture in my archives of me and my brother Bob, who was probably two or three years old, standing 
in front of a gravestone of one of our ancestors that my mother had decorated. The unofficial start of summer is Memorial Day. And I guess this week is going to be hot and dry. And that's fitting. Now, Dad, don't be working in the garden. Anything within 40 acres of the house is housework. Remember that. <laughs> Solomon wrote three books of the Bible. The young man, Solomon, wrote the Song of Solomon. That's a very difficult book to understand. I never could get my head around it, and I read it. And I read commentaries on it. But from what I understand, there was a young lady there that was in love with her shepherd boy. And Solomon wanted her for a wife. She didn't want Solomon for a husband. She wanted her shepherd boy. And that was the one, I believe, that Solomon let get away. He had 700 wives, 300 concubines, foreign wives, trying to find the right woman. But the Song of Solomon, the lady in there, was the one that got away. Who knows what would have happened if she would have become the wife of Solomon. We read the book of Proverbs. And Solomon now is raising children. And he tells his children, don't do like I do, do like I say. Ever done that? Mom, Dad? Sure we have, all of us. And then he writes Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, his life is pretty well done now. The kids are raised. Pantyhose hanging all over the bathrooms. All the MasterCards are charged up. And he's there at the end of his life looking back now. And he says in chapter 12, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light, or the moon, or the stars, be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. See, nothing changed. The world goes on. Solomon's gotten old, but the world goes on. It's still, the sun still shines, and the rain still come. But he never got to enjoy them like he should have. And he goes on, and he says, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, arms, the ones that do the work, the sound of the, uh, I lost my place here, and the young and then strong men shall bow themselves. He's talking about the legs, I believe, there. And the grinders cease because they are few. Oh, we're, we grind with our teeth. And those that look out the windows be darkened. Our eyesight's not what it used to be. The doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. How come we wake up so early in the morning? We hear the birds chirp, and here we are, 6.30. We don't have to get up, but we still do. We hear a little sound, and it wakes us up. Life is like that. And they that shall be, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, you got any fear? You still do the ladders? Chuck, you still doing roofs? Do you still do roofs? Yeah. You're the exception. I get a foot off the ground, you know, I'm scared to death. We're afraid of things that are high. They scare us. We don't have the ability and the agility that we once had. And fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, white hair, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, 
Our minds can write a check that our body can't cash. Desire shall fail because man goeth to his long home, his eternal home, and the mourners go around the streets. They go about the streets. Wherever the silver cord be broken, or the golden, bore, golden bowl be broken, the pitcher be broken, and the fountain or the wheel broken as the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Father, we ask your blessing on the reading of your word today. Help us to get out of this what we need for this day, this Memorial Day. And help us, Lord, to remember. We need to remember. We've got a life behind us, more behind us for most of us than it has before us. But help us to remember the days that we were young and we were, had the ability to do the things that we wanted to do. We thank you, Lord, for these that have gathered here. Speak to our hearts today in Jesus' name, amen. I'm not going to expound that passage of scripture. You could preach for days on that passage of scripture. But I wanna run something past you here. Most of us here are on the downside of 60. We can look back at 60. As a person past 60, maybe 70, maybe 80, if you could go back and give yourself at age 20 some advice, what would it be? And I'm going to hope to leave some space at the end of this for some, some remarks. If you, knowing what you know now, could go back to yourself as a 20-year-old, what advice would you give them? And I've got some things that I wrote down here. I was saved at the age of 10. Some of you waited long into your years before you got saved. I think the first thing, the first advice that we should give to our younger self is the first time you hear the gospel, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you'll save yourself a world of problems. I know when my mom and dad got saved, from that day on, we never missed church. And it was very, very practical for me to hear the gospel and as I listened and listened and listened, the Holy Spirit done its work and convicted me. And I went forward and I got saved at the age of 10. I had shuddered to think of what my life would be had I not gotten saved. I shuddered to think of what I, my life would be had I, had I not had Christian parents. What would you go back and tell your yourself? at the age of, age of 20. The first thing that I had down there after the salvation is everybody sins. We can't keep away from it. Try as hard as we can. We can't keep away from sin. But it's what you do afterwards that counts. When you sin, do you keep a short list of that sin? And you go to the Lord and clean that out. If I could go back and, as, a, as an old man, tell a young man, myself, keep a short account of your sins. When you sin, get on your face before God and clean it up. Admit that you're a sinner. David, we look at the life of David and we, a lot of, a lot of sermons have been preached on David and the sin of adultery and murder. And yet God said David was a man after his own heart. Why? He's a murderer. He's an adulterer. David was a good repenter. If you don't believe that, you read Psalm 51. David know how, knew how to get on his face before God and cleanse those sins from his past. He was a good repenter. Therefore, God loved him. 
We all need to be good repenters. I spent most of my young life worrying about what people thought about me. You know, when you go to school, you got to wear your shirt a certain way and your collar a certain way and your cuffs folded a certain way and you had to wear Levi's. You couldn't wear overhauls because overhauls were, you know, the lower class Levi's top top drawer stuff and you worried about what everybody else thought and everybody looked the same you know we're going to be our own man <laughs> but we all look the same don't worry about what people think doesn't matter what other people think of you it matters what god thinks of you and i think if i had any opportunity to give myself as a young man advice i would say don't worry about what other people think of it you know what we do we go out and we buy things that we don't need or want in order to impress people that we don't even like i can remember when i was in my 20s i i, I had this bug about cars i love cars if it, I don't have any now. First time in my life I haven't had a car. I've had 60-some cars. I used to buy two new cars a year, convertibles. I was an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Stupidity runs clear to the bone. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to impress people. I got a new car. And, you know, you buy the thing, the first payment comes, and you, oh, what did I do that for? <laughs> Don't worry about other people and what they think. How many of you collect things? You got, you got a collection of some sort. I used to have scale model cars. Oh, 1950 Hudsons, Model Ts, Model As. 1950 Mercury's, 56 Ford's, 56 Chevy's, mint scale. And I loved those things. And they sat in a glass case and they gathered dust. Well, all the years that I put those together, I got to look at them, what am I doing with those? When Jane and I came back to Cambridge, my son inherited my car collection. And now he can look at them and say, what am I doing with those? <laughs> Things are not important. Experiences are. I think back through my life, and I think of several experiences. I can remember a fellow that I led to the Lord, Ronnie Stone. We were painting the basement of the church. We just got this new building, and we were painting the basement of the church. Run out of money, which is not unusual. And we come back to the church there and we needed about a five gallon more paint to finish up. And Ronnie looked over in a ditch and somebody had thrown out a, a beer container, you know, a six pack of beer with the empty cans in it, thrown it in the ditch. Well, he is irate. I mean, what are they doing that on the church property? And he jumped out of the car, went out there and grabbed it and brought it in there. And he just was mad as a hornet over that. And he pulled those cans out of there. And somebody had forgot to pick their change up. And there was $50 in there. We went and got our five gallon of paint and we finished the basement. And thanked the guy that drank the beer experiences you've got them experiences last fill your museum with good experiences we have experiences that are good and bad fill your muse museum with a good one when you go back to visit there are things that you can visit that will just warm your heart and bring back some fond memories assets things don't do it experiences do protect your eyes and your ears hearing aids 
I bet half the people in the assisted living have hearing aids and don't use them. They come up and talk to you. Do you have your ears on? No. I don't like them. They spend a fortune for a hearing aid. What happened to their ears? Well, in some cases, I know a couple of them, they listen to hard rock music and they just beat their eardrums out. Protect your eyes and your ears. If you're going to do something that's dangerous, you wear safety glasses. I had a piece of steel come right, right there, right to the edge of my safety glasses. There was another piece that hit the glass, but it didn't go in. I could have lost an eye. Protect them, the only ears and the only eyes you got. But on the same token, physically, you think spiritually. Protect your eyes and your ears spiritually. There's stuff that go in your ears that you never forget. Don't listen to that stuff. Turn that stuff off. I know when I'm looking through the computer or the news or something like that, if I see some, some picture of somebody that's on a, a high hill and about to fall off, I turn that off right now because that will give me nightmares. Protect your eyes and your ears spiritually. Watch what you put in your eye gate and watch what you put in your ear gate. Because some of that stuff you can't get rid of. You forget the good stuff and the bad stuff comes to haunt you. Keep a good, good track of your eyes and your ears, physical and spiritual. Another piece of advice that I would give a younger me, do something that you're not good at. I've got a sign that I had in my office, and it's in my room now, and it says just that. It says half of being smart is knowing what you're dumb at. Now you think of that. We're not all smarter than we do. When I was a young man, I wanted very much to learn to play the banjo. I wanted more than anything else to learn to play the banjo, and I bought a banjo. And I started picking on that thing, but I wasn't good at it. And I never, in order to play a banjo, there's an eight note roll, and you have to have fingers that go in overdrive. My fingers didn't get out of low gear. <laughs> So I picked at that thing and picked at it and picked at it and kept picking and I got a little better but before I got so I could play it, I gave up. And I wish I had never given up. Because if I'd have stuck with it, I would have probably never been good, but I'd have been a whole lot better than I was when I started. Do something that you're not good at. Teach yourself. Make yourself do it. And it's an accomplishment. <clears throat> make your goals small. Make them attainable. If you set a big goal, so I'm going to play bluegrass music on the Grand Ole Opry on my banjo. That's not attainable. But I'm going to sit in, in my chair and I'm going to pick the banjo and I'm going to listen to myself and I'm going to hit a couple of good notes. That's attainable. Be to do something that you don't know how to do, but make it attainable. The next thing I would advise a young man to do, read something every day. Connie brought me some books. I like to read. First of all, you read your Bible. Don't let a day pass that you don't read your Bible. And then, read something else. Something you like. You like history? Read some history books. Whatever you like, read it. If you like the Amish romance stories, read them. But read something else every day. Turn off the social media and turn off the TV set and exercise your head bone. That's what you got it for. It sits on your shoulder. Exercise it.
admit your mistakes. We have in our facility a cook that has never done anything wrong. Anything that goes wrong is somebody else's fault. <laughs> Something else happened, the supplier didn't do it, did what they were supposed to do. Never ever admitted to a mistake. Listen, we all make them. Correct what you can. A lot of times we can correct them and say, oh, I didn't know that. Well, I'll do it different the next time. Correct what you can, but own up to what you can. Man up. Don't play the game, the blame game. We spend our life blaming everybody else on our problems, and we wind up with the same problems and no friends because we're nothing but a complainer. We're an Eeyore. Habits. <coughs> Habits are hard to change. That's why you've got to make business. Do you know what it takes to make a habit? If you do something for 21 days straight, you've got to have it. So something you don't like to do, let's say Bible, Bible reading. You get up in the morning, you read your Bible. You do that for 21 days straight, you'll always read your Bible on, on the morning. It'll be a habit. And you just make good habits, because the bad ones are really hard to break. The next thing that I thought of, be hard to embarrass. You have been embarrassed. <laughs> The younger you are, the easier you are to embarrass. We've had some people in our church here that somebody has said something that they took the wrong way. They interpret. Sometimes, sometimes we're guilty of that. We interpret. Well, somebody interpreted something the wrong way and it embarrassed them and they got mad and quit church. They gave up on the Lord because of what somebody else said. It'd be hard to embarrass. We all do dumb things. That's just life. You do dumb things, you say, whoops, boy, wasn't that stupid. <laughs> Take a look in the mirror. The next thing I think of, let things go. Life is too short to hold a grudge. I have a relative or two that never let anything go. I don't care if somebody slighted them or they thought they slighted them 25 years ago. They never let that go. Hatred is the acid that destroys its own container. If you hold a grudge in your heart, the other person probably doesn't even know you have it. But it will kill you. It will make you sour. Along that line, ditch toxic people. Don't be an Eeyore yourself, but stay away from people that are always living on the dark side of the moon. Stay in the sunlight. S-O-N. Sunlight. That's where we live as Christians. <clears throat> Don't accept advice from anybody that you would not ask advice from. Don't accept criticism from anybody that you wouldn't ask for advice. Would you go to the Pope for marriage counseling? Oh, I want to go to the priest. I'm going to get some problem with my kids. You know, he knows everything there is about kids. <laughs> so let me go to the priest and talk to him. You know, a lot of times we listen to what people say, and they don't know what they're talking about. They just open their mouth, insert foot, and chew on. We need to be careful of who we take our advice from and who we allow to criticize us. You're going to get criticized. I don't care what you do. You know, the uh, Murphy's Law is no good deed goes unpunished. And you're going to do something good, and it's going to be intended.
set and you have to help somebody, if someone's going to take it wrong, don't let it bother you. Ditch it. Put it up. And the last thing I've got down here, every action does not demand a reaction. I've made that a part of my life. I have stuff come in my ears all the time that it doesn't go out of my mouth. I swallow it. And you'll have stuff go in your ears that doesn't need to go out of your mouth. Swallow it. Let it pass. Just because somebody says something, you know, we, we had a president prior to this one that couldn't pass a situation without a reaction. Every action demanded a reaction, however small it was. And I think that the, that was a great deal part of his downfall. You can't let stuff bother you. Just let it pass. Now I'm going to ask you, we've got a few minutes here. If you could say and give advice to your young self at age 20, what would it be? Won't everybody speak once. <laughs> Body. Take care of your body. Take care of your body, your knees, your <laughs> The only one you got. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Take care of your body. John. says honor them. Re honor is due. Yeah. Respect is earned. And that's right. Yeah. And, and as parents, right. we have to earn the respect of our children. Yeah. But God commands our children to honor us and commands us to honor our parents. Who else? I don't know what My daughter got me a shirt and I think it's, uh, it's a good thing. And it says on there, thug life. Drop the T and get over here. Yeah. <laughs> Hug your friends. If you love somebody, show. That's right. Show your love. Let your light shine. And that you can draw other people under Christ. Because they look at you, you say, well, I'm a Christian. They're going to say, well, prove it. They, they make you prove it. Treat people the way you want to be treated. You go over the world. And to love one another. And forgive. Because the Bible says if we don't forgive one another, God ain't going to forgive us. That's correct. So that's one of the things that I regret in my life, <coughs> I was 40 years old before I ever hugged my dad. And I regret that. Yeah. My dad didn't have enough. But I wasted all those years. Who else? Make it short, Ken. You know how you are. Yeah. <laughs> Find a wise man and make him a friend and listen to him. It will save you a lot of grief. Find a wise your man your and make him a friend and listen to him. A lot of grief will be saved in a way. They're very good. I saw another in some place. Simon. Um, something I have done all, most all my life, if there's somebody that I couldn't get along with, somebody that we're just always at each other, arguing or whatever, even as a kid, I put them at the top of my prayer list and just pray the Lord and make us friends. And you can't say somebody learn. you pray for. Right. <laughs> That's very true. If you've got somebody that you don't get along with, pray for them. Yeah. And you can't hate somebody you pray for. Them. Okay, who else? Don't want, to, don't want to miss anybody. All right. I hope I've given you something to think about. Take that home and ball off. Roll it around in your head.
that museum, visit the good experiences you had. And remember, we all do dumb things. So let it pass, let it drop. Pastor, I'll let you uh, close in prayer and bless whatever we're going to eat here.